So today, guys, we are going to basically take the basic science that I have learned in seventh grade and use it to prove that God is real. First thing I'm going to talk about is cells, which all living things are made of cells. You guys can't see the computer. You can see that it's here. You can't see it on the screen, though, but I'm going to basically talk about it. Uh, there's six characteristics that living things have. I'm not going to go over all of them. I'm going to go over the first four. Uh, so yeah, they have cellular organization, so basically they have cells. They have similar chemicals of life, which is like chemicals that make up DNA and proteins. They use energy, and they respond to stimuli. The stimuli one is like the really important key one here, but I'm going to talk about all of these a little bit more. There's two other ones, but I'm not going to get into those in this video. Um, so, stimuli. That is basically the environment around me, or around whatever the living thing is. Right now, it's comfortable in this room that I'm standing in right now. If I turn on the ceiling fan, I'm gonna, if I have it on, if I have it on high, it's going to get cold in here. I'll respond by turning off the ceiling fan. Birds, they they realize winter's coming, they fly south. Or bears, they can they go into hibernation. That is basically what stimuli means. It is responding to the environment. They use energy. That's like chemical energy from eating and different things like that. Uh, the chemicals of DNA and all that. Here's another thing. DNA, just that right there, proves, proves science wrong and God. It proves that God is exist in existence. Because how would things be able to be passed down like that if this was a mistake? Uh, and then cellular organization, how, can, so humans, they have like a lot of cells. Um, animals have a lot of cells. There's one, there's actually uni, unicell, uh, unicellular creatures that have one cell, like bacteria and things like that. How would all of this be set up like it is if this was a mistake? And also, actually, number five, I'll go ahead and talk about that, grow and develop, or like, a plant, whenever it grows, it's, you know, it can, you know, where like, he is getting taller and things like that, developing like the flower bud, I don't know. But, yeah, and then also on the, I forgot what I was going to say for stimuli, but yeah. Next thing I'm going to go over is actually uh, the electron, di uh, electron diagrams, basically talking about chemistry. So, like, helium, it has two protons, which are in the nucle nucleus, which is the center of the uh, element. There's two neutrons. So, protons are positively charged. Neutrons are negative. There's two electrons, which are actually going around in the, uh, what's it called? I don't know. I actually need my, um, what's it called? Periodic table. Okay, so... Got my periodic table and it's kind of marked up, okay? So, if you go across the top of the periodic table, those are called groups. So, in this first section over here, which is the alkali metals, which are super reactive and blow up, so yeah, virtually anything. So, they all have one valence electron. And they are, um, <clears throat> and then on the periods, which is like the first row, second row, third row, fourth, like this way, the periods, those tell you how many, um, what's the word, energy levels, how many energy levels you have. So, if you're talking about lithium, which is in, uh, period two, group one, right underneath, he uh, hydrogen, it's gonna have two electrons in the center, okay, on the, in that center, in the middle, uh, energy level, because that first one, you only need two electrons, I mean, yeah, electrons, to make it happy. Every other energy level, you need eight electrons. And you'll see where I'm getting at with this later. So with the eight electrons, so since there's only, but since there's only three, uh, there's only three electrons and three protons, as you can tell by the number. So, like, hydrogen, it has one. It has one electron and one proton. That's what makes it super reactive. Um... Lithium, 
it is three electrons, three protons. Um, let's see here. If you go over here to uh, copper, which is Cu and 29, it's 29 protons, 29 electrons. And then if you want to find the neutrons, you say you go to copper, it's the bottom number, which is 63.546 minus 29, and that is how many neutrons it has. So, yeah, we, you can round it and get an estimate. That's what we did in class. So, yeah, the groups, those tell the valence electrons. Periods tell the uh, number of energy levels. So, yeah, here's the deal. How would that be so structured and perfect? How would there be your, I mean, seriously, you got your, uh, your some, you got some metals over here. You got your, uh, well, you got metals, you got your... Uh, metalloids, you got your non-metals, and all of this came about by a mistake, that, that just doesn't make sense. Now, I'm pretty sure it's these bottom two rows, uh, the uh, lanthanide series and the uh, ac acnolide, whatever that word is, series, uh, like with the uh, words that I can't pronounce, um, th I think those were invented in laboratories, not naturally made. But still, like, it's just, and being able to create things like that kind of fascinates me. Next thing we're going to talk about, so, you used to believe that God is not real. You believe that this is all a mistake. Look outside your window right now. Uh-oh, my dog got in trouble. Okay. So, um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Look outside. Because... I want you to notice all the natural things you can see. Maybe you can see a rock. Maybe you can see a tree. Maybe you can see grass. Whatever it is you see, no matter if it's living, non-living, or once living, which once living is like a dead tree or dead grass, stuff that was living but then died, uh, that's once living. But all those things like that that are natural... Okay, trees, they help support human, just life, okay? If it weren't for trees, life would not be possible because they take carbon and turn it into oxygen, okay? That is what the leaves do, okay? So, if it were not for those trees, for the grass, for the bushes, and just for green, like vegetation, things like that, Oh, uh, we would have a very short oxygen supply if we didn't already run out. Because there's like a couple billion people on this planet. All breathing. You know? So yeah. Just that right there. How can a mistake... How can this be a mistake if those trees right there and everything around us is natural supports human life and animal life and plant life? I'm going to go back to uh, organization of cells. So, I actually have a definition here. So, organiza organization means that living things are made up of cells. Cells are orderly and structured living units that are capable of carrying out specific processes. So, the orderly and structured things, that that's just... Like, here, here's the deal, okay? If you were to make a mistake, you're building something and you accidentally messed something up. There went my lighting. Okay. I should have known it's not going to stick to a chair. Yes, I actually tried that. I'll try it for the rest of the video. Stay. So, if you tried to... Uh, okay, oh, no, I forgot. Cells are orderly structured, okay? Uh, especially in plants. And here's another thing. Animals and plants have completely two different types of cells. Because animals, they're, well, not really, but... Uh, animals, cells... Oh, okay, the lighting ain't gonna work in here. Okay. So... On, uh, on, on animals, they're more circular or irregular, irregular shaped whenever the, well, the cells are irregular sh shaped. And plants, they're more rectangle, rectangular and all that. One other thing that this has brought to my attention is also, uh, like plants, okay? They create their own food called glucose through photosynthesis. So, if this is a mistake, how could plants make their own food? Okay? Here's the deal, guys. This is what I'm saying, okay? 
This world cannot be a mistake. God has to be real because he is the creator of this planet. He has to be real because there's all these different things around here that are just perfect. They're perfect. How would it, if there was a mistake, that the snow would be different than it? Like there, there's no two identical snowflakes. Okay, that is my question. Seriously, people. How is it? I, just, I don't understand how people think that this could be a mistake when I realize all these crazy things around us. God is real, guys. That's the only... I mean, it really doesn't even take proof. It shouldn't take proof. But, just in case it, you needed some proof, there you have it. It's simple proof. It's nothing uh, big and famous and words that you don't understand. Well, maybe you don't understand a few of those words. I don't even understand a few of those words. But, maybe it's stuff that you don't understand, but, like, well, okay, no, no, this is not, this is nothing big, like what Ken Ham or Bill Nye would say, like, this is, no, Bill Nye was against Christianity anyway, because he's an atheist, he's an atheist, but, this is not, this is not even that confusing of science, this is literally 7th grade science, that I just proved God real with. Shouldn't take proof, but there you have it, guys. So it's, it's all, I mean, seriously, just seventh grade math. Okay, what's in this notebook right here literally can prove that God is real. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time.